So let's discuss the concept of solubility. So what exactly is solubility? Well, it's the ability of one compound, usually a solute, to dissolve with the second compound, usually the solvent. So let's suppose we have the following situation. Let's say we have a beaker that contains our solvent. Let's say water. Now let's say we take a salt, let's say solid sodium chloride, and place it inside our beaker. What do we observe? Well, we observe that our salt will eventually disappear. That means it dissolves with our water. A homogeneous mixture is created. Now, why is that so? Well, what happens? The solid dissociates into its constituent atoms, into the sodium positive charged atom and the chloride negatively charged atom. And then the water molecules, because they're protic polar, that simply means we have polar bonds and they're able to donate H atoms. What happens is these molecules, these ions, interact with our polar solvent molecules, our water molecules. Recall that the oxygen has a partial negative charge and the H atoms have partial positive charge. And that means that the water molecules will align in a way to stabilize this negative charge on the chloride. Likewise, the water molecules will align in a way to stabilize the partial or the positive charge on our Na, on our sodium atom. So, salvation takes place and salvation is stabilizing. Salvation is the electrostatic interaction between the negative charges and the positive charges and that is stabilizing. So because of this stabilizing effect, because our products are stabilized by the polar solvent, this sodium chloride readily dissociates. So we see that whenever we have a polar solute, the polar solute will dissolve in a polar solvent. So polar dissolves polar. Let's look at another example. Let's suppose we take sugar and let's place that same sugar in our container filled with our solvent water. Now sugar also contains OH bonds or OH groups and that means sugar is protic. It could donate H atoms and it contains our polar bonds. So if we take sugar and place it inside our container, sugar will also dissolve because the water will salvate our sugar. The water molecules will orient themselves in such a way to stabilize the partial positive charges on our H atoms found on the hydroxyl group. So, once again, sugar readily dissolves in water because of hydrogen bonds between OH groups on the sugar and the water molecules. So once again, polar dissolves polar. Our polar sugar molecule dissolved, is dissolved in the polar solvent, namely water. Now, let's recall what a polar aprotic solvent is, or a polar aprotic molecule. Now let's suppose our solvent now is the following molecule. This is an ether, so it contains an O group, an oxygen group, bonded to carbons. So we have the following cyclic ether. And let's place water or let's mix water with our ether. What happens now? Well, even though these solvents, this molecule, doesn't have H atoms to donate, they can align their negative ends towards the positive charge in the polar molecule. So let's see what that means. So even though we don't have an H to donate on this molecule, we have an electronegative oxygen. And that means this oxygen will pull electrons close, creating a partial negative charge and a partial positive charge on these two carbons. And so when water mixes with this polar aprotic molecule, the water molecule is aligned in such a way so that the partial positive H atoms interact with the partial negative O atom. And the partial negative O atom on the water interacts with the partial positive carbon. And the same thing happens here. The partial positive carbon interacts with the partial negative oxygen and the partial positive H interacts with the partial negative oxygen. So once again, if we mix a polar with a polar, they will readily dissolve. 
What happens if we take a nonpolar aprotic, like a hydrocarbon? This molecule, a hydrocarbon, has no net dipole moment. Its dipole moment is zero. And that means it's nonpolar. And it also doesn't have any H atoms to donate. All these H atoms are sp3 hybridized. All these H bonds are sp3 hybridized. And that means they will be relatively strong and nonpolar and they will not dissociate the H atom. So hydrocarbons cannot hydrogen bond because they don't have any H to donate and they're not polar. Therefore, they will not dissolve in polar solvents. Why? Well, because this salvation will not exist with hydrocarbons. There is no way that our polar water molecule can interact with this molecule in a stabilizing fashion in the same way that it did with ether, with sugar, and with our salt. So, we see that nonpolar will not dissolve in polar, but if we mix nonpolar with nonpolar, if we take one type of hydrocarbon and place it into a second type of hydrocarbon atom, they or hydrocarbon molecule, they will mix readily.